I'm heading down to the bottom of our beat at Westfair. Um, I haven't fished down here for a while. It's a really cool little piece of water that tucks down underneath a big set of trees. It's very overgrown on the other bank and there's always some good fish hiding in the other side. It's a really cool little piece of stream here. This is actually where our beat at Westfair comes down and joins onto the bottom of Westover at beat one. And these two then join and go down into Fullerton and join the main test. I've got a couple of swans in here, so we'll leave them in peace. And we'll start working our way up from here, I think. A little bit more overgrown in here. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to spot a couple of fish hanging in under the tree. And I've just spooked two fish right here. Smack opposite me. Just under the tree here. But they are moving up. If I give them some time, I think they might succumb to the beetle. Oh, they're just filling nicely. Perfect. I think we'll settle down a bit. There's a fish just taking a nymph there. So I think maybe we'll put that beetle on and see what happens. Well, straight off the bat. As we're fishing under the trees here, I thought I'd put a little black foam alder beetle on, which has been really successful through this season. So let's go and give this a chuck. So this fish is just hanging in the current up there. Didn't get quite far enough. right over the first fish. Oh, he moved. This other fish is now tucked in right in front of me. Oh, he's moving to it, he's moving to it. Gotcha. Oh, that was such a beautiful slow take. He just eased up under that fly. Now he's going to try and stuff me under the tree now, I suspect. Yep, straight underneath that tree he's headed. Come on, fish. Oh, that's a very nice brownie. Oh, we're going downstream. Oh, very casual. Oh, yes. Try not to fall in on the edge here. Come on, fish. I won't bother you, Mr. Swan, I promise. Yes! That's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Just release him gently. There we go, off he goes. Thanks, my friend. Beetle one, trout nil. Well, that was an extremely satisfactory beginning. Line just flew out like an arrow. Dropped that beetle just under that tree. Fish just came up, sipped it. Perfect. Textbook. Let's see if we can find another one. So I've just switched over to a small tungsten beaded nymph because there's a big grayling in there. So I'm going to cast this in 
and watch that fish like a hawk and see if he moves. Oh, I can't believe I missed that fish. I saw him literally savage it. Just need to get a little tighter angle underneath that tree. That's going to come down perfectly. Watching the trout. Don't think he liked that. That's the one. Got the trout. Oh well, it wasn't the grayling I was looking for, but I'm very happy with that. It's another good fish. Looks like he wants to head downstream. Where are you, fish? Don't stick me in the reeds. There you go. Come on, down you come. Land him in the same place as the first one. Stuff me in the bank there. Come on, fish. No, don't go under that tree. Don't go under that tree. Come on, back this way. Back this way. Come on. Yeah, no, I watched that nymph just come down past him and just he just his mouth opened and there was a wriggle of the head and there was no doubt that he hit the fly. He's gonna make he's gonna make me work for it. Come on, fish. Oh, it's a strong fish. Come on, head up. Yes, lovely fish. Another lovely buttery go. Oh, look at the colours on that one. That might actually be a wild fish. Up his fly, just pop straight out. That's a really pretty, pretty fish. Come on, back up a bit. Just support his head with the net. And away he goes. Get bigger for another day. So the sun's come out briefly. That was a lot of fun. Oh, there's an olive just come off there. Um, but you know, I bothered these fish in this hole enough. So um, I think I'm gonna move on up and see what else we can find. Let's see if there's anything creeping in behind this tree here. Water's pretty skinny here, so I'd expect to maybe see a few wild fish. Ooh, there's a lovely grayling there. Don't know whether he's seen me. I think he might have seen me already. They are very sly. It's an interesting cast. It's just smashed something. A little nymph, perhaps. Let's see if we can't put a fly in front of him. Got to get underneath that branch with a weighted nymph and a relatively long leader. That bounced all the way around, that's no good. Find him. Oh, that's just to one side. Oh, spooked. Yep, okay. Maybe not that one then. He's moved a little bit higher. Yeah, that nymph coming down is too heavy. Little tungsten bead. Not having that, I'm going to have to go a lot smaller to catch that fish. Although there's a huge trout just come out on the other side there. It's just come out from underneath the tree.
God, he came zooming out to eat that. I thought we were straight in there. It's probably giving him a bit too much time to look at the fly. That's the one. It's kind of dribble past his nose. Nothing. This might be another another case for the beetle, I think. Here we go. I think my fish has gone right up underneath that tree there. Hmm. I wonder whether it's worth just putting a blind cast into that dark spot and seeing what happens. I'm fairly sure that that's where my trout has vanished into. God, the river's looking great here though. Yep, I think we'll give this a go. So beetle scene take two. I'm gonna tuck this fly underneath this branch, right into that little hole there. Drift it down. God, that's coming down nicely. My trout is under there. He can't resist that, surely. Oh, literally looks like it's just fallen off something. I love terrestrial fishing. Give it one more for luck and see if he's in there. No, I think he has vanished. Let's keep moving up. And that trout's taken up station. In the middle of the river there. Just gonna tuck it under this bush. Oh, that was right on his nose and oh what a oh that was close. That was very close. Came and had a really good inspection of it. impressed though. Literally flicking around and landing on his nose. And that was a fish that came out of nowhere. I don't know where he came from. He's just taken a little. Yep, 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 yep. Come on, come on, eat it. Oh, mmm. Really not sure about that beetle. I think we might have to go to an olive pattern. So I think it's time to switch to a little midge. Might be a little midge that he's eating. We'll take one of these little size 18. Black CDC midges, these are very successful. Okay, so that fish has just come out and eaten something clean off the surface, so we're now going to throw a little size 18 midge over him, which I think hopefully he's going to come straight up and snaffle. Once I obviously put the fly in front of him. came quite a long way across the river to eat that but he's going to eat that come on oh oh really denied that was right on his head I thought for sure he'd savage that that's just landed right again on his head doesn't want it So that trout is still sitting in the middle of the current. He's in very skinny water. Didn't like my CDC midge, which makes me rather depressed. However, I'm moving to a size 16 little beaded pheasant tail. See whether we can't trip him up on that. Can't go in with too much of a splash because otherwise it's going to uh, spook him. So it's going to have to be a very gentle little plop. Let's see what we can do. 
Okay. Moment of truth. Let's get the distance right. Clear on my back cast. Duck under the tree. That was rubbish. Flies bouncing around. Landed just behind him. Oh, did he eat it? He was going to eat it. Hard to tell. Oh, well done, Pete. Just chuck your whole leader straight up into the tree. Oh, I think we got lucky there. That grayling just came and smashed it. So I just struck the whole leader straight into the tree. But I think, yeah, I've got away with that one. The fish is just hanging up in the middle there. Still darting backwards and forwards. I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to see it on this little screen. Ooh, it's a rise right up against the bank here. I can't really see what's going on there though. I think it might be time to put the beetle back on. Well, that's mildly frustrating. There's two massive fish sitting in the middle of the river, but I left my rod here because I went back to go and pick up this camera. And now I can't get to my rod <laughs> because I'll spook the fish. Might be time for a bit of hands and knees work, I think. Nice fish, those though. A pair of them just sat in the middle of the current. What say you, Bears? Should we get them? Hmm. I'm gonna have to be quite cunning here. Yeah. Gonna get nice and low. Get down on my knees. Have rod. Have beetle. Let's see what happens. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, that's going to be interesting because I've only got one hand on the rod. Yep, he just turned around. He wanted that beetle. He really wanted it. Oh, that's another lovely brown trout. I think he's going to... Where are you going to go? You're going to try and put me under the trees over there. He, he, no, don't go to the trees. Don't go to the trees. Don't go to the trees. Come back out. Oh, no. Yes, yes, yes. We got him out of the trees. And he really, really wasn't expecting that. No, he's still trying to stuff me under the trees. No, no, no. Come on. Come on, no, this way, only on light tippet. Right, Baz, I think we'd better try and land this fish quickly. He's gonna try and put me under my own bank. That was a downstream beetle take, that was fabulous. Stand him on his head. Oh, teeth over the leader, don't like that much. Come on, get out of our, this is where that nine foot nine really helps. I can pull him away from my own bank. Come on. That's enough, let's have you back quickly. That's another lovely, really, really lovely trout. Let's get that beetle out of his gob and get him back quick. live to fight another day. So that's been a pretty cool morning's fishing. 
Had a few nice fish from underneath the trees. In the words of Ron Weasley, this is bloody brilliant. I think you spooked my fish. You did. Yes.